Hello, all our people that are watching us on Facebook and uh, YouTube. Welcome to us. Today, today is the 30th of August, the end of our winter in South Africa. I know in other parts of the world, uh, probably where some of you are watching from, it is uh, the end of your summer. So we've got uh, the privilege of looking forward to spring and uh, summer ahead of us. Uh, just uh, something quickly, last week we spoke about uh, many things and the circumcision of the heart and part of that we spoke about uh, baptism. So next week we will have a baptism service here in, uh, uh, in Kainos. So uh, uh, just to let you know and hopefully we'll be able to broadcast part of that as well next week after the service. Although it will only be later, uh, about 10 o'clock next week. <coughs> Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we have the, the privilege of sitting around your word, uh, listening to what you have to say to us, and just uh, experiencing your presence as you uh, work your work through your Holy Spirit in our lives. We just bless you today, and we bless each one that is part of our service here, but also each one that is part uh, listening of our service through, through the internet. <coughs> We pray that you bless each one and open up our hearts to receive what you have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Alright, <clears throat> last week, and in this time that we're busy with, we're speaking about uh, keeping the faith. And part of keeping the faith in the whole new where we are now, and where we're going to, and uh, <clears throat> what God is saying to us in this time. And God has been speaking to us about Joshua. Joshua, they had to bring the, the presence of God, the glory of God, back to Jerusalem. And uh, the whole story, uh, David that brought the, sorry, uh, the, the presence of God back to Jerusalem. But Joshua, that had to move into the new with the people of Israel. And uh, so we still with Joshua 5. And uh, today I want to speak with the topic, we must eat the whole lamb. We must eat the whole lamb. Let's read Joshua 5 verse 8 to 11. When the circumcising of the whole nation was finished, they remained in their places in the camp until they were healed. And the Lord said to Joshua, today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt from you. And so the name of the place is called Gilgal to this day. While the people of Israel were encamped at Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, in the evening on the plains of Jericho. And the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. Now what is important for us to know is that uh, the first thing that they did uh, after being circumcised was they enjoyed the feast of the Passover. And they ate the Passover meal. Now, where does the Passover meal come from? Because that what Joshua had to, what Joshua understood, and that's what uh, uh, the people had to understand as they entered into the new. Uh, the Passover represents the beginning of new life. That's the the beginning of new life. When we read in Exodus, the first Passover. And it's important for us to understand what Passover is from the first Passover. So we read in Exodus 12, verse 1 to 2. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall, for you, uh, shall be for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. At that time, it wasn't uh, according to the calendar that they were using at that time. It wasn't the first month of the year. But God came and He said, I'm doing a new thing. And as I do this new thing, we've got to understand this is the beginning. And so I'm setting the calendar, your calendar, uh, Moses and, and Aaron, your calendar I'm setting to be the beginning of the new. And we know that where we are right now in history, where we are right now uh, uh, busy with what God is doing in the church, uh, God brought us to a place where we were in Egypt, God brought us to the place where we were in the wilderness and now God brings us to a place where He says it's now again a new beginning. 
It's a new time and God sets His clock and He's busy setting His clock again for the new beginning that He has for the church. I've said this over and over again, but it's important for us to know that uh, church will never be the same again. Or maybe I should say church should never be the same again. There will be those that will fall back into the old, but for us, we want to say, as what Joshua said at the end of his life, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Me and my house, we will follow God. The, my house and myself, we will move into the new that God has for us. And that's where we are right now, and that's what we want to do, and that's what we're experiencing. So, the Passover represents the beginning of new life. When the first Passover was uh, celebrated, or, or, or uh, when, when, they, when they killed the lamb and ate the lamb, and uh, the blood was put on the doorposts, it was the last, the last day in Egypt. It was their last day in Egypt. It was the beginning of the new that God had for them. Exactly 40 years later, exactly 40 years later, we come to this section that we just read about Joshua, where they come into the promised land, they circumcised, and it's exactly 40 years to the date that they have Passover again, and this is now the beginning of the new. And so, uh, I believe that we in, 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 in Kainos, and we in the church in the world, and I say it over, let me just say it again, that it's not just Kainos that's experiencing this. All over the world, God is raising up churches to experience the new that He has. Uh, but it's a new, a new season for us. It's a new time for us. We privileged that we had our, uh, a week or two ago, we had our 21st birthday of, of Kainos. And it's a whole new season, a whole new seven years that is starting off right now. And we're moving into the new. So the Passover represents the beginning of the new. Then the second thing, sorry, the second thing that I want to say is that the blood of the Lamb secures salvation. I know we know that, but let me just explain it again. Let's, let's just get the foundation again fixed. For the blood of the Lamb uh, secures salvation. Chapter 12 of Exodus, Exodus, where we read about the first Passover, we read, And you shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Let's keep the Lamb in the house until the 14th day of this month. When the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel, Israel shall kill their lambs at twilight. Then they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. Now, uh, just a few things. I, I, I don't want to focus too much to explain that Jesus is the lamb uh, that was slain for us in the New Testament. We know that and uh, I will just touch on that uh, in a while. But let's go back to that first Passover. Let's go back to that first Passover. They killed the lamb. They put the blood of the lamb on the doorposts and on the lintels. Uh, and once inside, they could not see the blood. Once they were inside, they could not see the blood. And so when the blood of Jesus Christ is on our life, we don't always see the blood. But in faith, we've got to, we've got to rest in the promise that God sees the blood. You see, when these families got together, they killed their lamb, they put the blood on the post, they went inside and they rested. They rested in knowing that we believe that God will see the blood on the post of our house and He will pass over and He will not kill our firstborn. They had faith that even though they couldn't see the blood themselves, that they knew that the blood was there. In, 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 in verse 13 of Exodus 12, the blood shall be a sign for you, God says, on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall befall, befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. God came and he saw the blood and he passed over and he saved them and they were saved by that. They were not saved, just very important, they were not saved by their obedience. They were not saved because they did certain rituals and they ate the lamb and they did all the things according to what God said. They were not saved because of their obedience. 
They were saved because of the blood. And you see, sometimes we come as Christians and we think the more I can be obedient, the more works I can do, the more I can get all these things in line in my life, the more things that I can do that I think I can please God with, uh, the more I can do, God will be pleased with me. And then He will save me. God doesn't save us by our works. We know that. But it's by the blood of the Lamb that they were saved. They were not saved because of what they had done or thought or felt, but because God saw the blood on the posts. And when God sees the blood, that's when we, we, we receive His redemption. Uh, they did not put the blood on the post and then go inside and hope that they would be saved. They did not think, oh, we hope. They were assured that they would be saved because God said so. And so God says when we apply the blood of Jesus in our lives, when we allow uh, the, the, the Lamb of, of God, His blood to be applied on our life, then we will be saved. Um, they were not saved because of the, the value that they put on the blood. I know I'm saying things that, that sounds like it's contradictory to the gospel. But they were not saved because of the value that they put on the blood. They were saved because God's value that He put on the blood. Uh, and it's not because of us. It's because of Him. And it's because of the blood of Jesus that we are saved. And all we need to do is to come in faith and trust Him and believe that there's power in the blood of Jesus. Um, the blood saved them from God's judgment, but it also freed them from slavery. And that's so important to us, that the, we, we, we save from the judgment of God, because God is a just God. We spoke about it a few weeks ago, where we spoke about mercy and grace. Uh, we didn't speak about the, the, the judgment, or, or God is a just God. Uh, but the judgment of God says... You must receive what you deserve. Then God's mercy comes and He says, You do not receive what you deserve. And then God's grace comes and God's grace says, You receive others' gifts and my glory and my salvation, what you don't deserve. Uh, so they were saved uh, from God, not just from God's judgment, but also from slavery. And there are many Christians today walking around. And in the new, we've got to understand that we need the blood of Jesus, not just to save us from Egypt, not just to save us from the wilderness, but to save us from the slavery so that we can be free to go into the new that God has for us. And there's an amazing new that God has planned for each one of us. And uh, we should be excited about the new because it's through the blood of Jesus, not our own works, but through His blood alone. And we need to have the blood of, of Jesus in our lives. Um, Jesus is the Lamb of God. We know that. And it's His blood. And that's just quickly, let me give you one scripture. Because there's many scriptures that I can go through. But uh, uh, 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19. Realize that you weren't set free from the worthless life handed down to you. From your ancestors by a payment of silver or gold which can be destroyed. Rather, the payment that freed you was the precious blood of Christ. The lamb with no defects or imperfections. Um, the children of Israel, they didn't go walk around, splash the blood onto the posts, and then go back to Egypt. Um, they didn't do that. They didn't come and put the blood there and say, okay, now we've got the blood on, on the lamb, now we will be saved, now we can go back to our slavery. We can go back to our old life. And, and uh, th there's something that the church of Jesus Christ must understand is that when the blood of Jesus is applied in our life, everything changes. If nothing changes, there was no blood. If nothing changes, there was no blood. But everything changes when we, when we move and the blood of Jesus is there. And uh, 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 it was through the, the precious blood of the Lamb that we, we, we uh, know that and, and the blood was put on the post 
and they didn't turn around and go back to the old life. They moved forward into the new. When the people of, of Israel are walking together with, with uh, uh, Joshua, when they came and, and, and they had the Passover, they didn't say, okay, now we're having Passover. we circumcised, we're having Passover. Now we're going to go back to our old life. We're going back to the wilderness. That would be stupid. The Passover was the end of the wilderness and the start of the new. And they moved into the new. So that's the amazing thing about the blood of Jesus. Um, unfortunately, 1400 years later, 1400 years later, the people came and they saw the blood of the Lamb dripping from the cross. And when they finished and they saw that, and it was finished, they turned around and they went back to their old life. They went back home. They went back to their old rituals. They went back to their old religion. They went back to the old law. They went back to all the old things, even when the new was there. So we need to understand that uh, uh, once we've placed the blood of Jesus on our lives, and once God has saved us from His judgment and saved us to the new, out of slavery to the new. We've got to walk in the new. We can't go back to where we come from. Uh, but also 14 years, 1400 years ago, there were some that said, from now, everything has changed. They went back into the, the house and they ate of the lamb and they waited. And they waited three days for Jesus to rise from the dead, de uh, from death. And then they walked with him. And then they walked into the new, the new covenant that God has for us. Today we're going to have uh, um, communion together uh, at the end of, 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 of the message. And we've got to understand that it's through the blood of Jesus, the new covenant that he brought to our lives, that we can move there. And then, just for interest's sake, is that the, the, the lamb was roasted by fire. The Bible says in verse 8 and 9 of Exodus 12, they shall eat the flesh that night roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted, its head with its legs and its inner part, parts. The, the lamb was roasted and Jesus was roasted, if I can put it that way. What does, what does fire talk about? Fire speaks about about the wrath of God. Fire speaks about uh, God's uh, uh, symbol of God's anger and judgment and destruction. And, and in Hebrews 12, 29, it says, For our God is a consuming fire. And Jesus had to go through that. His blood had to be shed and he had to go through that roasting uh, for us. So that we... Do not have to go through the, through the roasting that he has for us. In, in, in Isaiah 53, we know the scripture very well. It says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Christ was roasted. As that sheep or that lamb was roasted on the first Passover, Christ was roasted and he took my place. And he took our place. Fire speaks about hell. And fire speaks about the, the, the uh, 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 part of uh, or, or hell, the, the final place where we will be. And Christ was roasted through the fire of God so that we do not have to endure the fire of hell for eternity. Isn't that amazing what he did for us? He went through that hole. He wasn't boiled. He wasn't uh, eaten raw. He was... He was roasted as the, the, the lamb. And then I want to come to the main point of the, this week's message. And the main point of this week's message is we must eat the whole lamb. We must eat the whole lamb. Uh, we just read this, but let me read it again. Exodus 12, 8 to 10. 
They shall eat the flesh that night, roasted on the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs they shall eat it. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted its head with its legs and its inner parts. In, 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 in South Africa, we call the inner parts, when you make it trite in English, in Afrikaans, it's afal. It's a good word for, <laughs> for that. Uh, uh, afal is another word in the English that they use for, for, for all the inner parts. They had to eat everything. Now some of you get excited when we speak about uh, 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 awful, and, 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 and some of you get a wrong turning in your stomach when you speak about it. <laughs> but uh, they had to eat the head. They had to eat the, the legs. They had to eat the inside parts. They had to see, eat everything. The whole lamb had to be eaten. And, and it's very important that we understand that because today people want to eat just part of the land. They just want the good parts. I mean, what is better on a Sunday afternoon than a roasted lamb of a leg of lamb? What, what is more exciting to go home and, and have a roasted leg of lamb? Uh, and everybody wants that roasted leg of lamb, but no one wants the offal. No one wants the trite. No one wants the head. No one wants to eat the rest of it. But before they could move out of Egypt, they had to eat the whole lamb. And that's why God even said, if your family is too small, find another small family to join you, but together you've got to eat, but you've got to finish the lamb. You've got to eat every part of the lamb. And, and so, uh, uh, we cannot only eat what we like and please our flesh. And you see today in the church, people eat just only the parts of Jesus that they like. Oh, we want salvation. They eat the Savior part. Oh, we want, we want the part that makes us feel good. They even go to, to ser services and places where they go and they Oh, I'm going there because we're going to eat out at this restaurant, this preacher, this, th this special sermon. Because we like that part of the land. But God said, we've got to eat the whole lamb. If we want to move into the new, we've got to eat the whole lamb. In John 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see, many people want to eat just the, the part that says, I am the way. Because many people want to accept Christ because they don't want to go to hell. They want to go to heaven. And that's the only reason why they want Christ in their life is because they want to go to heaven one day. And you probably will go to heaven if you just eat the way. If you just get part of the way. You might. I don't want to say you will. I'm saying probably or might or there's a big possibility or maybe a small possibility. I'm not even really sure. But many Christians are Christians because they don't want to go to hell. They want to go to heaven. Let me tell you, heaven is just our destination. But we've got a life on this earth where we've got to live and eat the fullness of the Lamb. You see, uh, we cannot have Jesus only as the way. We must experience Him as the truth and the life also. We, we must know Him as the truth. We must know His truth. He said, I am the truth. And then He said, you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. That's why there are so many Christians and so many children of God that are not set free because they don't know the truth. But you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Jesus said, I am the life. Many of us, we don't want Christ's life. We want our life. We want to keep our life. We want to hold on to our life. We want the way. We want a little bit of the truth, not the whole truth. Just a little bit of the truth. But the life. No, we want to keep our own life. And we don't want that part. We don't want to eat that part of the lamb. You see, we cannot accept Jesus only as our Savior. We need to accept Him as our Lord. There's a big difference just between Savior and Lord. Savior is, I've saved you. They were all saved from the wilderness. 
but as Lord, they have to follow Him in to the promised land. You can be saved from the old without moving into the new. And in Kainos and in the church all over, I believe that God is taking us into the new. We don't exactly know what it's going to look like. We don't know how we're going to have services uh, once the new really kicks in. We, we don't know. Maybe services will be the same, but everything else will change. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen in the new. But only when we have Him as Lord will we know that we can follow Him because He will be in control. But when we want to be in control, we want to have our own life and just have Him as the way and the truth. We're not going to get there. When we come to the place where we want Him as our Savior, but not as our Lord, we need to have Him as, as our Lord. Uh, uh, Romans 10 verse 9 says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. I looked up the definition of Lord in the, in, in, in the, in the Strong's uh, 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 English-Greek dictionary, and it says, Lord is, the word is curi kurios, kurios, and kurios means supreme in authority, that is controller. It is God, Lord, Master, Sir. And you see, how many of us really want that part of the land? Before the people could move out of Egypt, they had to eat the whole land. Before we can move out of the old and into this new that God wants for us, we've got to eat the whole lamb. And part of eating the whole lamb is eating Christ the, uh, as Lord of our lives, not just as our Savior, as Lord, as our Master, as our God, as our, our, our uh, uh, Lord, as our Sir. The one that we can say, Lord, you are in control. In, in uh, Matthew 7, 21, it says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. What is Jesus saying there? Jesus is saying, not everyone that just says with his mouth, he is Lord, but those that live out in obedience to Christ, live out. We spoke about the blood and we said, it's the blood, not our obedience. But once the blood is applied, we obey. We don't obey for, to get the blood. We obey when the blood is applied to our life. And then we walk in obedience and we see Him as Lord. Easy Lord of your life. Have you eaten that part of Him in your life to say, He is the Lord of my life? Or have you just eaten the part of your life to say, He's my Savior. I'm going to heaven. And that's all that's important to me. In Matthew 28, we know the, 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 the great commission that God gave. Uh, he said, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. We speak in, we've spoken about eating all of the Lamb. Now God, Jesus comes and he uses the word all here. He says, uh, uh, all authority in heaven is given to me. And then he says, um, Go therefore make disciples of all nations. And then he carries on and he says, uh, Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. All, all, all. Here we see that part of lordship that God wants us to eat. Not just savor, but lordship. He, he wants us to eat, uh, eat the fullness of what he has for us. He says, All authority has been given to me. Now just listen carefully. Uh, I've made the mistake myself, I think, uh, uh, many times, in trying to explain how much authority we have. And we try and use scriptures to say, you have the authority. You have the authority over this. You have authority over the devil. You have authority over sickness. You have authority over... You know what the Bible says? Jesus says, all authority has been given to me. He didn't say it's been given to you. He says it's been given to me. To Him. Christ. Christ has got all authority. And we only receive as much authority as we receive the, as much of Jesus. So if we only eat a certain part of Jesus, we only have a certain part of authority. Because the authority is in Him. And when He is inside of me, that authority is inside of me. So when I only have Him as Savior, 
I only have a small part of authority. I only have authority to say that I'm not going to hell, I'm going to heaven. But when all authority, and I, and I, and I, and I eat him, I, I eat the lamb of the Passover, the full lamb of the Passover, as the Lord, and he's in control of everything in my life, all authority is his. And then he says, going to all the nations, uh, 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 baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. It's very important when we have Christ, the full lamb inside of us, then we've got the job to teach. In, in, in Kairos, that's one of our, uh, our callings, is to go teach and equip people and make disciples. And we've got, at this stage, for those of you that don't know, we've got over 120 students uh, all, over, uh, all over South Africa or all over our area that we are busy uh, uh, um, teaching. But all this time we've been teaching them what Jesus has said. Okay? Because he, he says here, and go therefore and teaching them to absorb all that I've commanded you. So we try to teach them all that God has commanded us. But that's not what he says. And only last week did I realize that he doesn't say that. He says, teach them to observe everything that I've commanded. It's not just teach them what I have commanded. Teach them to observe. I want to tell you today, we need to not just know what Jesus said. We, know, we need not just to know what he commanded. We need to observe. And observe means we need to do what he has commanded us to do. So, uh, th this is the place where we are. And this is what Jesus uh, 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 wants to do. And he wants us to eat the whole land. And then another part of eating the whole land that is important is we cannot accept Christ as the head but reject his body. We cannot accept Christ as the head but reject his body. We cannot do that. In Colossians 1.18, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Christ is the head of the body. But he calls the body the church. And remember, we're not talking about a denomination. We're not talking about a local church. We're talking about the whole body of Christ. So many Christians, and even in this time of COVID-19, uh, and those of you that are, that are listening, and maybe you're there, and you might get upset with me when I say this, and you're welcome to be upset, and I will bless you in your upsetness. But uh, listen carefully. We, we choose to stay away from the body of Christ because we only want to eat the part of the body. We only want to eat the head of the lamb. We don't want the rest of the body. We only want to eat that part that, that makes us feel I'm connected to the head. But we cannot be connected to the head if we're not connected to the rest of the body. And if you're at home because of other circumstances, uh, we understand. And, but if you are at home and you're not part of the body of Christ because you think you don't need the body of Christ, I want to tell you today that we're missing it. And we're missing on the fullness of what God has for us. Because he says, if you want to move into the new, you cannot move into the new on your own. If you want to move into the new, if you want to go into the promised land, if you want to move into what God is going to do in this whole new season, you cannot move on your own. You need the body of Christ. You need the head, obviously. You need Christ in your life. But you need the body of Christ around you. And you can have excuses and you can say, but the body has hurt me and the body has, has rejected me and the body has done this to me and done that to me. I want to tell you today, without the body of Christ, you cannot just eat part of the lamb. You need to eat the whole lamb. Uh, we're going to come to the, to the uh, 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 communion table soon. But in 1 Corinthians 10, Paul speaks about, he says, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread. We who are many are one body. 
for we all partake of the one bread. That's why it's so important for us to be part of the body of Christ. I'm not talking about you have to be at, at, at a church service every Sunday. Um, that would be good. That would be actually be, be excellent. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about we need to be part of the body. We need to join in with the body. We need to be activated. We need to function in the body of Christ. Uh, we need every part of Jesus. And every part of Jesus is also included the body of Christ. To be able to glorify Him for what He has done, we must receive all the parts of Jesus into our lives. We need to eat the whole lamb. We need to, be, we need to experience the whole lamb. We need to experience every part of Christ. We need to experience every truth that He has said. We need to experience not just the parts that is there for me. One of the biggest mistakes biggest mistakes that we make is that we 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 uh, the parts that 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 is interesting for us and that we like we we, we spend all our time focusing on that part instead of having the fullness and the church has made one big mistake i've made one big mistake and we have taught for many years we have focused on teaching people who you are in Christ. That's one of the biggest mistakes that we've made in the church. Who you are in Christ. And now I know some of you sitting there, are, some of them sitting here in front of me, their eyes have gone big. But uh, I can imagine you sitting at home or wherever you are and you're thinking, what is he talking about? The biggest mistake is to focus on who we are in Christ. Because God actually wants us to come to the place where we can focus on who is Christ in me. Who is Christ in me? Christ in me, the hope of glory. Not me in Christ, Christ in me. And I need to get more of Christ in me. That's why we need to eat the whole lamb. Because we've got to get more of Christ. The more of Christ in me, the more, the, 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 the more we can live in victory and in the newness. And I end off, before we just sum up, I end off with what John's, John the Baptist said in John 3. Um, and it's not on the notes, those of you that got notes. But he said, that he might become more, and I become less. He didn't say, that I might become less, so that he can become more. We preach it as if he said that. I must become less, so Christ can become more. No, that's not what he said. He said Christ must become more because the more Christ becomes, there's an automatic reaction in me to become less. If I become less, some other things can become more that is not Christ. So he's not saying I must become less so that Christ can become more. He's saying that he <coughs> might become more and I can become less. And so let me just sum up. We cannot eat Him as Saviour and not as Lord. We need to have Him as Lord and Saviour. We cannot eat Him as the head but not enjoy His body. We need to have Him as the head but also enjoy His body, the body of Christ. We cannot uh, eat only Jesus as Saviour of Jerusalem. We need to have Him as Saviour also of Judea, Samaria and the ends of the earth. He didn't just call us. He didn't just call us to be here where it's comfortable, to eat this part of the lamb. He's called us to take the lamb to the different parts everywhere. But starting here, being here, uh, not neglecting one or the other. And we can, cannot eat him only on a Sunday. But we have to have him every day of the week, every part of our lives. And so that's my message today, just to bring us back as we move into the new, God is coming and He's calling us and He's saying, it's either everything or nothing. It's either me that is completely in control or you take control and you go your own way. But if you want to move into the new, if you want to be part of the new, if you want to be carriers of my glory, if you want to be there where, where you can experience my fullness in the new, you've got to eat 
all of the land. Take everything I'm giving you. Might be persecution. Might be some hardships. It might be some difficult times. But definitely, there's a lot more that we can have. You see, we need, we need Christ and the cross so that we can receive Christ and the crown. It's all of Him. And that's what He wants to give us. We're going to go to the to the table now and we're going to enjoy some time uh, just uh, spending in uh, a communion uh, as a body of Christ we can spend this together here wherever you're at home if you have family if you have your your your, your uh, family with you and you want to join us you're welcome to join us but as we come to eat Jesus said we just read that Jesus said about my blood my blood is the new covenant. My blood, when you bless, when you bless the, 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 the cup, you bless my blood. You bless the new covenant that I've given you. And then he said, when you break the body, uh, the, 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 the bread, it's my body that has been broken for you. But in my body being broken, you now are the body and you are whole. My body was broken and and messed up and ripped apart my physical body Jesus says so that my spiritual body can be whole and that you can have the fullness of what I have for you so let's pray together and then the worship team will come forward and they will lead us in worship while we just move to the table and just spend time taking part of the table Father as we come to you today we thank you that there's something significant today that we need to take hold of. And that is, we need the fullness of Jesus Christ in our life. Jesus, thank you that you came and you died on the cross for us. That, you, that your body was broken for us. So that you, and you became the lamb, the, the Passover lamb for us to take our place. So that today we can partake in your body can partake in your blood through just spending time together around the communion table and we pray that as we take part today that we will make a decision in our hearts to say we want to eat the whole lamb we want everything of you in our lives the good and the bad the difficult and the and the good times everything as long as we have you we will be able to move into the whole new that you have prepared for us we bless you in Jesus' name.